Joe Rogan sings a Christian song about Jesus on his podcast while discussing megachurch pastors that fall short that he wish hadn't. Rogan, interesting history of Christianity, been seemingly to soften lately, and I was taken aback where he randomly brings up that he got, he found this Christian song that he likes. This is so fascinating. Okay, go ahead and play the clip. Found a song from 1970. That's a, a, a Jesus song, a pro Jesus song. And if pro Jesus, <laughs> that is amazing. A worship song is acceptable. Christian music. Yeah, worship, Christian, pro gospel, Jesus. Pro I, Jesus. We'll take it. We'll take it. Rogan, I'll take it, man. Pro Jesus. I love that you are about to sing a pro Jesus song. Pro life, pro Jesus. Pro Jesus, pro life. <laughs> this is amazing. Jams, dude. It's pretty <laughs> Jam. interesting. I love it. I'm going to send this to you, Jamie. Um, pro Jesus song. <laughs> Yeah, it's, 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 I'll tell you the guy as soon as I pull it up. Hold on a second. My playlist is so long. I keep saying I'm going to publish this on Spotify, and I swear to God I will. I publish your playlist? Yeah, oh, the yeah, Green Room playlist. Not. Pause it. Yeah, uh, Rogan, please publish your Christian music playlist. I would oh, love I would if Rogan just had a pro Jesus playlist. Oh. Yeah, listen to this. Sh this is from this does kind of slap. This brother wrote this song prophetically to Joe Rogan. The, oh, yeah. This was written for a time as this. Why you, don't you put the bottle back on the shelf? Yeah. <laughs> as he's smoking. <laughs> he's like, you're yellow fingered from your cigarettes. As he's. Why don't you come to Jesus? He's got the answer. Why don't you come to Jesus? He's got the answer. I don't know if Joe Rogan ever saying, Why don't you come to Jesus? was on my 2023 bingo card. This year is so fascinating. Joe Rogan is singing. Why don't this is sung multiple times? Why the song don't is by Larry Norman. Yeah, we're gonna look up Larry Norman. <laughs> Listen to this, though. No, like he's this. vibing. It's good, man. The lyrics are good, and it's also you have to look at it. You're in a time capsule. It was 1970. <laughs> what he <laughs> said? Rock and roll will set you free, honey. You'll be dead before you're 33. I mean, that's the whole like uh, 27 curse, right? All 27 folks. Club, yeah. Yeah, 27 Club. Why don't you look into Jesus? He got the answer. Wow. Good song, right? Yeah. Say you want to be a superstar, but you never hung around enough to find out who you really are. Wow. If I've never seen God more overtly try to get somebody's attention. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. Joe Rogan finds this random song from the 1970s called Why Don't You Come to Jesus? He's Got the Answers. And he's singing, why don't you come to Jesus? He's got the answers. That is really Completely, funny. Completely like not ca capturing the irony in this. That is amazing. He why plays the whole song to him. To Jesus? He got the answers. Before we go into Carl Lentz catching more strays from Joe Rogan, we have to first unpack who Larry Norman is. This ties into what we saw with Jesus Revolution, right? Because the, the Jesus movement believe it or not, was sprouting out a lot of great Christian art at the time. Now, you guys may not think it's great in hindsight, but at the time, Christian rock was pretty revolutionary, right? Even though rock, and I would say most of our modern-day pop music came out of the black church, I, I bet you if we dug a little deep that there's going to be some overlap with the Jesus Revolution, some overlap with all the music that came out in that era. Cliff Richard, Mark Hurd, um, Randy, I don't know, Stonehill. Larry Norman was born Corpus Chris in Corpus Christi, Texas, the oldest so son of Joe Hendricks, Joe Billy Norman. Joe Norman had served sergeant in the U.S. Da -da -da, World War II career. While still in high school, Norman fit, formed a group called the Backcountry Seven, which included his sister Nancy Joe, friend Green Mason, Hollywood Street Ministry. Soon after Norman left People, he had a powerful spiritual encounter that threw him into a frenzy of indecision about his life. And for the first time in his life, he received what he understood to be the Holy Spirit. In July 1968, following a job offer to write musicals for Capitol Records, Norman moved to Los Angeles where he spent time sharing the gospel on the streets. He described in 2006, I walked up and down Hollywood Boulevard several times a day, witnessing a businessman and hippies and to whomever the Spirit led me. I spent all of my Capitol Records royalties starting a halfway house and buying clothes for f uh, food for new converts. He was initially associated with the First Presbyterian Church of Hollywood and Salt Company Coffee House Outreach Ministry, where he explored and pioneered rock gospel genre. Interesting. Yeah. 
So he was in Hollywood. He's talking about being around the hippies. So so that's a little bit about Larry Norman. I'm pretty sure if we dug d- deeper, we'll find some correlation with the Jesus movement. This is around the same time, massive revival in the country at this time. So a lot similar now. Again, go see the Jesus Revolution movie. I believe it's on Netflix now to give you some historical context. Yeah, there he is. Uh, the Pied Piper of the Jesus movement. Is that what that says? Mm-hmm. Larry Norman, the Pied Piper of the Jesus movement. Okay, yeah, I called sense. it. Larry Norman was a pioneer. He was doing something that was very difficult to do and neither... The church nor secular rock and roll music industry that he was a part of wanted him to do. Yeah, it's exactly what was happening at the time. So in this entire exchange, celebrity pastors, but specifically Carl Lentz, catches some strays here. Now, now what he's going, what Rogan's going to say next is it's jolting, but I want you to hear his heart beneath what he's saying. Because if you, if we actually hear what he's saying, both the words and the heart, I actually think what he's saying is something that we all should rally behind. But I think his perception of it is slightly off like rock and roll churches like there was this uh gal that i knew that worked for fear factor and uh she was into like this rock and roll church like she i think she at one point in time she was i don't know what she was of a different religious persuasion and then she got into this like heavy duty christian church that was in town where mm-hmm. the guy was like a cool guy young guy i go is he f-ing everybody <laughs> right. she's like no. okay so he knows a girl. She's into the rock and roll church. He asks, is, is this young, cool, hip guy effing everybody, right? And then in a moment, unfortunately, Carl Lentz catches some strays. But listen to what Rogan ends up saying. Go ahead. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, I know how those go. Like, yeah, exactly. He's the cool guy? He's the cool guy who likes rock and roll? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he also likes Jesus. Maybe. <laughs> like, we're always, hoping for ma- we're always hoping for the guy that that's really all he wants to do. That's really it. He's just really about Jesus and love, and he's not trying to f*** everybody. But that guy has not shown up yet. Right. Like almost pause it now. He says we're hoping for that guy. Maybe we want the guy that just loves rock and roll and Jesus. Mm-hmm. But then he says, but that guy hasn't showed up yet. He's talking about uh, the average Christian, like it's the second coming of Jesus. He's like, we just want a guy that's like a, a wholesome person and isn't trying to have sex with everybody. But mm-hmm. we haven't had that guy yet. Mm-hmm. And it's like that's like a majority of yeah, Christians. yeah. And so and so there's two things that are being said here. One is obviously when people are creative, artistic, influential, he's saying, I don't want them to be that guy. Mm-hmm. It's not good to be that guy. It, we, we, we want someone that, that just genuinely loves the Lord, which is kind of crazy to think about. Joe Rogan is saying, we just want someone that just loves, like that's, that would be a good thing. If someone's creative, influential, charismatic, and they just love the Lord, mm-hmm. and they just love Jesus, we, that's actually a good thing. That's what he's saying. That's, that's what's coming out of his mouth. The flip side in what he's saying is that his perception is those people don't exist, which I would say then is selection biased on his part. Mm-hmm. Because I've said this before and I'll say it again, there's substantially more Greg Glories out there that pastor churches than there are Carl Lentz's out there, right? There's substantially more guys who've been serving Jesus faithfully, leaning into serving their churches. They, they've never had a scandal. That's why you've probably never heard of them, but they pastor a couple hundred people, sometimes a couple thousand people, and there's a lot of them out there, and he doesn't know. I don't think he knows that, right? Yeah. Obviously, he's a comedian, and this is funny, and he's embellishing a little bit, right? Now, this is the part uh, This is the part where Carl Lentz catches some straights. You know, like the guy was showing his root and when he's hanging out with Justin, <laughs> Justin Bieber, remember? We called that guy out a long time ago. <laughs> I love we him. called that guy out a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Because, like, he's too hot. <laughs> no. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to make fun of that, but but he did, right? He called out Lentz before, like like a year or so before Lentz ever got caught up in that. There's the preacher. Look at yeah. whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa. Yeah. What the fing dick root preach? Hold up. What's he, what's going on with his fing shorts? <laughs> Bro. No. No, 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 no. Any guy who's showing dick root, you know what I mean? Like the base of your you're pulling your shorts down to base your off. like that. You're doing that because you're trying to get laid. Shut it off. Why? Why? But what did he say? He said anyone that's doing that is trying to get laid. He he did say that. And that was the last words. If you guys could hear past the. He did say that. Like he's too hot. He's too charismatic. Like why are you so hot? Why are you so charismatic? First of all, that's, why are you laughing? <laughs> he really called it. <laughs> well, he he's called. Like, it. Look at that preacher. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> he called it. He called it like and a that was year four and a years half. ago. Was that four years ago? That clip was four years ago. And then what? So Carl that was Lentz at least was... a year before any at of that least happened. A year. Yeah, yeah. So it sucks that Carl Lentz caught, caught strays there. I think that the 
point he makes is accurate. Like th these folks, these things shouldn't happen. And when they do happen, they're so ingrained in people's brains that then that's all they think about when they think about quote unquote, cool rock guy, Christianity, right? Which is unfortunate. I think Rogan playing that song and singing and playing the whole song and singing the whole song. I, 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 I don't see how he doesn't see the irony in that. It's pretty great. It's, it's, <laughs> uh, why don't you come to Jesus? Oh, that's a great song. He's got the answers. <laughs> hey, I love his ability to be impartial, though. Mm -hmm. Like, it's something that he that doesn't really jive with his world of view, right. yet he's able to be he's like, saying, it's a good this song. is a great song. Right. And, okay, now, hot, hot, hot take. That song was a lot better than a lot of stuff we, we hear nowadays. Correct. Because you could tell that was that still had the edge. It still it was it was well written, well produced. It wasn't, but it wasn't for this for contemporary Christian right. arm of of, of because, capital records. Because there was no contemporary. Exactly. There was no contemporary Christian. He's seen my gonorrhea. Mm -hmm. Talking about yellow fingers with your cigarettes, mm -hmm. and then bringing it all back mm -hmm. to Jesus. Yeah, man. So shout out to. Uh, Larry Norman. We see according to the Bible that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used from my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think would be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. And here's the thing, with the hope to create a prayer movement, we've made the PDF version of this prayer journal completely free. So to get the PDF of our prayer journal completely for free, go to blessgodpdf.shop now.